I'd like us to start in John chapter 20, verse 29, and the title of my message tonight is Trusting God When You Don't Understand. What in the world is going on in my life? Why did that happen? Why didn't that happen? <laughs> when will what I want happen? Why, God, why? When, God, when? That sound like anybody you know? <laughs> you know, we're doing a series on contentment and satisfaction. And um, trying to find some of the keys that will unlock some doors to that contentment and satisfaction. And one of the things that I realize must take place before we can ever really be content and satisfied is we have to get to the point where we don't have to mentally understand everything that's going on. We have to not know and be satisfied. We have to come to a place in our walk with God where even though it doesn't seem fair or doesn't feel right that we love God enough and trust Him enough that we know that whatever is going on in our life that He's still in control and that if we keep trusting Him, He will work it out for our good. In John chapter 20, Jesus was dealing with uh, Thomas, and Jesus said to him, because you've seen me now, Thomas, do you now believe, trust, and have faith? Well, blessed and happy and to be envied are those who have never seen me and yet have believed and adhered to and trusted in and relied on me. Blessed are those who believe and have not seen. Blessed are those who believe and do not understand. You know, I've heard many testimonies throughout my years of ministry and read many books about people who've had visions of Jesus and how He's come into their room and sat down in their bed and talked to them and how they've seen angels and so on and so forth. And I've never seen any of that. And I used to get a little bit kind of miffed about it. It's like, well, God, <laughs> hello. <laughs> you know, I'm like really committed to this. <laughs> I mean, if people can see that stuff. Why am I not seeing it? Because to be honest with you, that has to just jumpstart your faith. I mean, just imagine if Jesus would just come and sit on the end of your bed and have about a 45-minute conversation with you. That might get you through the next few years. Amen? And I think sometimes when we hear those stories, we think, oh, those people must have really, really, really great faith. Well, I, I'm, I, I'm kind of thinking that it's the people who never see anything and just keep plodding along and pressing on and pressing in and that maybe have got the greater faith. And so the only thing that God would ever say to me when I would ask those questions is, well, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. So let's just even take it a little bit further and say maybe if you haven't seen your breakthrough and you're still believing, then you're really extra blessed. Amen? Maybe if you've had something happen in your life that you just do not understand and you cannot wrap your mind around, and there's no way you can even get it to work out in your head, but you still believe in. Maybe you're more blessed than the ones who have never had those challenges and they believe. You know, it's one thing to say you believe. It's another thing to have your faith tested severely and come out on the other side of it still Believe in God. You know, I believe that in many ways God is a mystery. We want to understand God, but really His ways are past finding out, according to Job. And really, if we could understand Him, could He really be our God anyway? If we knew everything that He knows, could we still really call Him God? Wouldn't that kind of put us on a level equal with Him and that's not ever going to happen. So His ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. And He really doesn't want to hear, why, God, why? He just wants to hear, God, I trust you. I trust you. Now, we're going to look at several groups of Scriptures tonight that I believe will refresh us in the awesome majesty and greatness of the God that we serve. Toward the end of the message, we're even going to look at a few scriptures that tell us what heaven's going to be like. And I think sometimes we don't take enough time to look at that stuff enough. 
to really build our faith up in the greatness of God. You know, it's wonderful to talk about how he's our friend and he's our buddy and he's here with us in everyday life and we can talk to him about everything and we can have close fellowship, but we have to be very careful that we don't let a spirit of familiarity get on us to where all of a sudden now God is just our friend and our buddy and we forget that he's also awesome and mighty and all-powerful and, and that we're to have reverential fear for God and we're not to forget that there's nothing that he cannot do and there's nothing that he does not know and there's never a place that you are where he's not. <laughs> and that we can't hide anything from him. He knows every thought before we think it, every word before we speak it. He knew all of our days before ever year there was yet one of them. And I think maybe, I'm hoping maybe, just maybe, that if there's any of you here that are like I used to be, where you just think that you have a right to know everything and that you spend half of your time trying to figure everything out, I just hope that there will be some people here tonight that will get a higher revelation of God. I think it would be good for us to get to the point where we, we realize that that's just kind of dumb to demand that God explain everything to us. You know, as the president of Joyce Meyer Ministries, I don't feel like I have to explain myself to everybody. That doesn't mean that I don't give proper understanding when I need to, but there are times when people want to get into stuff that I'm just like, you know what, you don't need to know that. That's not anything that you need to get into. How many of you tell your kids sometimes, you know what, you don't really need to know that. Well, you know what, God is saying to some of you tonight, you know what, you don't really need to know that. Come on now, we're going to get to the point where we've got some contentment. Oh, we want to know everything about the future. Well, what kind of faith would that take? God's not going to give you a blueprint for every day of your life and have it all written down for you so there's no surprises. Oh, no, no, no. You're going to have to walk like the rest of us. <laughs> Hoping as you keep taking these steps of faith that You've really heard from God and you don't end up in the worst mess you've ever had in your whole life. Job chapter 9. Everybody always groans when we say Job, but we're going there anyway. It's right before Psalms. I think after Job, we need some Psalms. <laughs> now, you know, Job's a guy that, as far as I'm concerned, could have had a reasonable complaint. Job chapter 9, starting in verse 5. God who removes the mountains, they know it not when he overturns them in his anger, who shakes the earth out of its place and the pillars of it tremble. Now try to really pay attention to these and just get an understanding of the awesomeness of God. Who commands the sun and it rises not. <laughs> who seals up the stars from view. Just think about that. The stars are there and then here comes the light and you can't see the stars anymore. God commands the sun to come up and it comes up. He tells it to go down and it goes down. He calls for the wind and it comes. He tells it to go and it goes. He calls for lightning and there it is. We need to have a greater view of what an awesome God that we serve. Amen? We have to be very careful that we don't make God too little. Verse 8, who alone stretches out the heavens and treads upon the waves and the high places of the sea, who made the constellation of the, the bare Orion and the loose cluster Pallades and the vast starry sp spaces of the south. Now watch this, verse 10. Who does great things past finding out. Yes, he does marvelous things without number. There's always going to be things in our lives that we do not have the answers to. And I can tell you from personal experience as well as the Word of God. If you have to know the why behind everything and you're going to spend your life trying to figure everything out, you are never going to have contentment and satisfaction. You are never going to enter the rest of God because trust always requires having some unanswered questions in your life. How many of you have had some things happen in your life that have been pretty tough that you just don't get it? How many of you have had some things happen that seem really unfair? I mean, you just didn't really think you deserved what you got if you want to know the truth. It was like, well, that's just not right. 
How many of you sometimes wonder why the wicked seem to get blessed and the righteous suffer? <laughs> Doesn't it just aggravate you when you're doing your best to serve God and some evil person where you work gets the promotion that you've been praying for and you're just like, God, I just don't get it. I don't understand. Well, you know what? You're not supposed to understand. What you're supposed to do is say, but you know what? I don't have to have that to be happy because you're my joy and I'm not even, I am not even going. Now, listen a minute. I am not even going to make the devil even a little bit happy by wasting my day trying to figure it out. Did you hear me? The only person that's happy when you waste a day reasoning is your enemy. What God wants to hear is, I know you love me. I trust you. My times are in your hands. And I know that all things work together for good to those who love you and are called according to your purpose. All throughout the Bible, people wanted to know why. And the Israelites were the worst of all. And I want to just remind you that they spent 40 years trying to make what the Bible says was an 11-day journey. And I regret to say that many times we do the same thing. We spend way too long trying to grow up in God. And I think we've got a lot of the same kind of problems that some of them had. We have to learn how to trust God and not have to have the answers to everything. I think it impedes our walk with God. It impedes our progress when we spend so much time trying to figure stuff out that we just waste days in confusion. If I would have walked in here tonight and said, how many of you have been experiencing a lot of confusion lately about what's going on in your life? How many of you would have probably put your hand up? Okay, now, now look at Mama. <laughs> Mama J, all right? <laughs> that is a waste of time because half the time when you think you've got something figured out you don't have it figured out anyway you just found something that kind of suits your brain <laughs> and we don't need a bunch of mental understanding we need discernment now I don't think there's a problem with asking God why once maybe twice but when you go over into confusion that's when you've gone too far the minute you get confused, you've gone too far, and that's when you need to back off because God is not the author of confusion. And the Israelites wandered through the wilderness 40 years going around and around the same mountains trying to make an 11-day trip. And if you go through the books of the Bible that show their journey, it is unbelievable how much they murmured, complained, grumbled and wanted to know why. Why did you bring us out of Egypt so we could die out here? Why is there no water? Why do we just have this manna? Why can't we have any meat? Moses, why didn't you leave us alone? Then Moses says to God, why did you pick me? <laughs> Everybody was wanting to know why and God wasn't telling them why. All because they were asking the wrong question. All God wanted to hear was strengthen me, Lord, for this journey and let me go straight forward through to your will, not murmuring, not complaining, not doubting, not finding fault with you, not demanding answers that I don't have. I trust you. I'd like a lot of you tonight to trade your questions for some trust. And remember what Jesus said to Thomas, blessed are those who believe and still have not seen the answer that they're looking for. Blessed are those who believe and still yet do not understand. Let me tell you something. Too many people, now listen to what I'm going to say. Too many people try to serve God with their mind and you have to serve God with your heart. Our mind has to get renewed according to the word of God. But if you have all these questions in your mind... You're not serving God with your mind. You don't serve God by trying to figure him out. You serve him by believing in your heart and taking authority over your mind when it gets to the point where it's not in agreement with the word of God. Let's look at, um, at Daniel chapter 4, verse 35. And all the inhabitants of the earth 
are accounted as nothing and he does according to his will in the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand or say to him what are you doing <laughs> how many times have you said that to God this week what God what are you doing I just don't understand what are you doing and you know sometimes we have a dream or a vision from God something we feel like that he wants us to do and we just step out in faith and we're so proud of ourselves because we took this bold step and then all of a sudden nothing starts working the way that we thought it was going to work why God why what are you doing I don't understand I thought I thought I thought well you know what stop thinking go back and see what's in your heart well yeah yeah I believe that's what God told me to do then don't try to figure it out I love what the Bible says about Abraham that God told him leave your family and the place where you live leave your home and all that you're comfortable with and go to the place that I will show you and I will make of you a great nation I will make your name famous I will bless you and I will make you a blessing and the Bible says he left and did not trouble his mind about where he was to go he just started moving and said God will lead me how many of you think that maybe I'm right that we spend a little much too time in our brain too much time in our brains trying to figure too much stuff out and we need to believe that God is in control you know God said to Gideon oh you mighty man of valor God is with you <laughs> and this is what Gideon said well if God is with us then why is this happening your circumstances right now may not look like God is with you but God is with you because he's already said he'll never leave you nor forsake you he's right here in this place with each one of us tonight he got you here he'll get you home he's taking care of your family while you're gone God's in control now you know people that like to have control of everything are not gonna like this message tonight and people that are real mental and want to have everything all figured out and on your notepad and have a plan you are not gonna like this message tonight I don't care for this message tonight but I'm gonna preach this message tonight because the only way I know that I can ever be content is to let God be God and stop demanding that he tell me things that he doesn't have to tell me because honestly they are none of my business Why do bad things happen to good people? And why do good things happen to bad people? That one almost bugs me worse. <laughs> Doesn't that make you mad? Why do children suffer? Why does a young mother of four get terminal cancer? Why are children abused? Why did my dad abuse me sexually for almost 15 years and for probably a good eight of those years I was praying for God to deliver me because I received Christ as my Savior when I was nine why didn't he hear my prayer or maybe he did hear my prayer but he answered it in a little different way than I thought he should have see I realize now that although God didn't get me out of the situation he did give me strength and he built something in me that he's now using to help people all over the world come on we got to trust God more than to think that when we give him our plan of what he should do in our lives then we spend the rest of our life being confused because he didn't give it to us the way we wanted him to for years I was bitter and resentful and didn't understand why God didn't get me out of that situation I didn't understand and finally I thought you know what I'm not spending one more day of my life trying to figure this out what I'm gonna do and I don't want you to forget this part of this message what I'm gonna do is what the Bible says I'm gonna overcome evil with good I'm gonna let God take this evil thing and work something good out of it and then I'm gonna spend the rest of my life beating the devil over the head with it don't you let the enemy ruin your life because something has happened to you that seems unfair and unjust that you don't understand
If you don't get it like somebody else got it, then God's going to take what you got and make something wonderful out of it. What happens when a teenager commits suicide and nobody even recognized that he had a problem? What's wrong when a pastor's son is electrocuted under the platform of his church while he's doing some electrical work and then that man has to get up on that platform and preach week after week after week and try to still trust God and tell people that God is good? Seems like just a little bit too much sometimes for God to expect. Doesn't it? What happens when a woman, and I'm obviously telling you stories that I know about, what happens when a woman gets an out and out miracle in her back and yet still has headaches every day? <laughs> Hello? I mean, couldn't you just have done all of me while you were doing it? Why, God, why? Don't spend so much time trying to figure out what isn't done that you forget to see what is done. Come on, I'm going to say that again. Don't spend so much time trying to figure out what isn't done that you forget all the great stuff that God has done. Come on, God is good. Can I tell you tonight, you are either going to learn to trust God or you're going to drive yourself crazy. And I'd like you to make a choice tonight which it's going to be because I think for some of you it's time that you let go of some stuff that you don't understand and you get rid of the little rift between you and God that's blocking the best relationship that He wants you to have with Him and that you trust God totally and believe that even though you don't understand the things that have happened to you that that does not in any way change the character of God. That God is good. He is a God of justice. He is a righteous God, a holy God, and He loves you more than you can even begin to know. And no matter what you've experienced so far, God has got a good plan for your life, and you are going to experience that good plan in your life. Can you just let it go? <laughs> you know what, God? big picture here, it doesn't matter anyway. I mean, what are the 70 or 80 or even if you live to be 90 or even 100, what is that compared to eternity? It's nothing. Nothing. What I don't understand now, I'll understand when I'm in His presence. We got eternity to catch up on all the stuff that we couldn't figure out here. And I've determined, I've made a decision, and I'd like you to make this decision with me. I've made a decision that I am going to enjoy what Jesus died to give me. Because I believe it's tragic for Jesus to have gone through what he went through, to purchase our freedom, and then for us to live every day miserable, discontent and miserable, confused, and all messed up inside, I'm going to enjoy my life. I'm going to be content and satisfied, and I'm going to enjoy my life. And if that means I have to have a bunch of things I don't understand, so what? 